Okay, so truck update time. I've done a bunch of things. It's time to make a video. Go over some stuff. I'll probably be repeating a bunch of what I have already said, but people have asked the same questions. So we're gonna go over all of it real quick. So I thinned out a bunch of the stock harness because I'm doing an integrated install where Holly is doing the engine and transmission and drive-by-wire and all of the other ancillary things associated with that like turbo boost control and uh, flex fuel. So, but I'm leaving the stock computer because I think I said this already, as I mentioned, this is not like a CAN bus car where even the HVAC controls and stuff are done through the body control and CAN bus like my G, but if you take out the stock computer on this, uh, it leaves a lot of gaps. So if you can just leave it in to do its thing and then add on the Terminator, which a lot of people with, I feel like trucks and Corvettes are a core market for this, right guys? There's a lot of people like, as soon as a truck and a Corvette comes out, people want a thousand horsepower truck and a thousand horsepower Corvette. The, mid, the day they come out, they want that year model making a ton of power. So there's a lot of interest in integration like this. And also when you have a truck like this, everything works. AC, everything is nice and functional. So if you rip everything out, uh, stuff is controlled by the body control module. I don't know if this car really has a BCM and I don't plan to look or trace all the wires to be honest, but, uh, Stuff like the fuel pump or the reverse lights and other things all work through the BCM and other connected devices. So if you remove that stuff, you lose that stuff. Also, like the OBD2 port wouldn't work anymore if you have a plug-in inspection on this. Uh, I'm not going to say all of it, but there's ways to make HP tuners pass a plug-in. So you would pass a plug-in. Stock computer would run all of that. It would identify the VIN and everything else that needs to work for that. Uh, this truck is exempt because of weight class and mileage and something else for for where I am. That's not feasible for a lot of you. So keeping the stock computer and the OBD2 port and having everything match VIN wise and operating system, uh, obviously very desirable for a lot of people. This car has what's called a serial data dash. It's not CAN bus, but it gets a lot of the information. It doesn't have, see, it might have it, but a lot of these cars they will have very simple wiring and it gets tack speedometer and other things fuel and coolant through the ecu i believe the oil pressure sensor goes right to the block a later model like e38 uh, after this like corvette and stuff like that that oil pressure goes into the ecu and then the ecu tells the dash what it is over cam bus so anyway, we'll back off of that for a second. You would lose most of the functionality of the dash if you ripped everything out. Uh, it's not a huge deal for a lot of people. Sometimes people would just put the, the Holly 7 inch or the Pro in and then you have everything back. Uh, you would just need to like wire the fuel gauge and everything else, but it's kind of neat to just keep all that. So we'll go back. I'm gonna do the fans through the stock computer and I'm gonna control the AC stuff is done through the stock computer. All that's gonna stay. And then the Terminator is doing like flex fuel. Uh, the stock ECU is doing the alternator. It's another thing I don't have to wire. A lot of that stuff. Uh, the starter, all that stuff's wired through the stock computer. Don't have to worry about doing that. The only thing that I need to do, this is a mock-up. That's a faller speed cast Chinese import manifold. He also hand makes schedule 40 stainless ones as you guys do know if you follow along. This was just for mock-up. So he's going to build, it's a very fancy manifold. Uh, we're gonna try to do divided log. So this is a divided T6 turbo. So we're gonna do a divided log and then we're gonna do twin wastegates. This is the spine of the division. So we're gonna do a wastegate here and a wastegate here. That's, that's the idea, that's the plan. We're not done yet so. Uh, things are subject to change, but that's the go-to. So I got my rails done. I even got a nice vacuum block, eBay $16 vacuum block. Uh, this does not have a lot of vacuum ports, and most of the time we're making extras anyway. So this was a neat thing I just decided to try out. A lot of people on Sloppy have used them. I just looked up one. This isn't going to be the permanent spot, but it plugs into the back of the intake on a barb, and then I have it going to here. I might trim it down and stuff it down there, but my wastegates, my boost controller, my fuel pressure reference are all going to get intake manifold pressure. You know, that's all gonna get hooked up. Uh, 
I wired everything in. A nice neat thing also about the Terminator is these trucks come with an eight wire, different tack module, drive by wire setup, and it can be a pain and you have to buy a thing called the X-Link to go from eight wire to six wire, which is what this is. So this is like a LS2, LS3, six wire performance style throttle body, which is how most of them are. That's like an LS3, that's like an LS2 one, and then this is a Snake Eater 102 millimeter six wire. So I'm using the Holly to do the drive by wire and the trans and the engine. And then what I'm going to do is share some sensors. You have to be careful. See, I'm, I'm gonna have to do a full report on this because I'm not done yet, but I understand how it works and I know people are already doing it and I actually know people who have done it. So you have to give the stock computer a crank signal so it can run the tack. And I believe it won't run parts of the air conditioning and other things unless it sees the RPM is running. So you can split the crank and the cam and feed them into the computer. The neat thing about that is, is you only need to do one wire because it's a three wire Hall effect sensor. So it's getting power, ground and signal. You only need the signal wire. The Holly is doing power and ground. So you just split off the signal wire and you have to do a nice job. Obviously, this is the entire running condition for your standalone and everything else. So don't do a shit job. So what I want to do is actually I ordered an extension harness and I'm going to nicely crimp part of the extension to pop out to the stock computer crank input. The cam, uh, one or two of my friends have already said you don't really need the cam. The only thing you need cam for is for sequential fuel and spark. You can actually unplug the cam and force the car into batch mode and get rid of the codes and you wouldn't really be much the wiser other than it's doing batch and waste spark, which is kind of useless. But the Holly will be doing fully sequential. The computer only needs to see crank. So I'm gonna do a extension harness and split out of there so I'm not cutting any of the Holly harness. That's the plan, that's what I'm gonna try. It's not done yet, I didn't get the extension harness. My fuel rails, I had to take the intake in and out like three times. The crossover I had going low and it was hitting the oil pressure sensor and some other annoying things were going on. I ended up with this. So a cool thing I wanted to show you guys, this is a PQY China regulator, I like these. They're eight by eight by six so it has an eight and eight and a six they're like 30 bucks 21 bucks depends on how you get them configured and with wires or not hoses fittings uh, you can get them with fittings without fittings the whole smorgasbord it comes with a gauge uh, these are always loose they always leak i don't know why you guys wouldn't check them anyway but these will spray all over the place if you forget to tighten them the, the diaphragm will leak None of it has Loctite on it. The orb fittings don't leak, obviously, if you get an O-ring correct. So this is feeding from the back of the tank. This truck had feed and return. I don't know if it was returnless or if he modified it. I'd have to ask him, and I just don't care to bother him. But uh, these later model trucks are usually returnless, so he might have you know, done some funny business there. So that's the stock feed, the 3 8 push lock into a eight orb, ICT billet makes that, it's on eBay, it's like 8 dollars 10 bucks. And then it's passing out of the eight into the T fitting on this rail and then filling all of the rails. And then when it's fully pressurized, it comes out the return, which is ugly, but it's what I had and I was anxious to get everything functional. Maybe one day I'll clean it up or I'll tell myself this lie until we don't do anything. There's my flexual sensor on the return and then I have it wired into the holly already. And then we drilled out a three inch hole here, which I have rubber grommets for, which once we're done running things in and out and confirming things, we will seal up with that. And these are cool War Performance sent these. There's some handy guys over there and they are sending me the extension harness also, which I'm going to use. And they gave me a bunch of other cool shit too. So they're also sending a fan harness. I got this with pigtails, but they're sending a harness that plugs into all this that I'm gonna wire for relays. So yeah, stock computer is going to do fans, alternator, air conditioning, run the dash, all that other stuff. A lot of you guys might not know, this year truck, the fuel level sending unit goes into the ECU and then it interpolates a 0 to 100 value, I believe, and then sends it to the dash over serial data. So the fuel gauge does not work unless you have the sending unit hooked up to the computer and the computer is delivering a class 2 data feed of a percentage filled. So all of that needs to work. The other thing is you can split Hall effect and five volt sensors. They don't really care. You cannot split a resistance based sensor like the coolant. So you can use this coolant. I would use it for the Holly because that's the harness is cut for that. And you're cutting all this up anyway. 
I'm going to either extend and put the, I have spare coolant temp sensors. The heads are ambiguous, as you guys might know, ambidextrous, whatever word you would like to choose. You can swap them and they have the same, they have a plug on this side and the coolant temp sensor on this side. You can pull the Allen plug and put a coolant temp sensor in and wire that to the stock ECU. And then it sees coolant temp and then your fans will work and your AC and it sees the things running and it'll turn on the clutch. So that should be all the data it needs, I presume. I don't know because I haven't done it yet, but that's just my intelligent guess. So on top of that, I'm going to do, like I said, crank only, no cam. Try to get my fans and everything else all functional, get the car running. The thing will start running drive, but just almost nothing else will work if you do this in a stupid way. So Joey says my custom log manifold should be done by the weekend and then we're going to start bolting everything on permanently and making intercooler piping. Other than that, the intake is on and the bolts are in. Uh, what I did do is the Holly comes with these intake studs, which man, I hate intake studs. I hate that you have to like try to get it fitted perfectly and set it down on these. And then once it's on, you have to reach in here and do a washer and this drop this on and then try to tighten them all uh, no thanks i looked up what it is to buy like bolts and there really isn't very many cheap options there's like 60 dollar arps and then some other guys sell 40 or 50 dollar ones and i had an epiphany and i took a intake manifold bolts from the plastic intake and i was like hey uh, well this is actually it's similar to this this is a valve cover bolt i'm sorry but it has a little it's got a sleeve so you can't crush anything. It stops the bolt. And, you know, this is the same thing. It has a captive thing in it. So they were roughly the same size. It looks like the valve cover bolt might work too. It's probably the same thread pitch. So you can put this on like a workbench and use a punch and, uh, and punch the bolt out of the sleeve. And then it bolts the intake right down. They fit great. Those are completely unmodified truck intake man sorry the sun is just continually washing out the autofocus and my being a squirrel is not helping that's a stock gen 3 intake manifold bolt in the holly intake it doesn't bottom out fits good i didn't torque them all yet that's it so that's cool i also did that what else is there real quick i shortened and unpinned a lot from the stock harness. I kept the pins in case I need to re-add stuff. I already did, I de-pinned so much the computer wouldn't turn on, the fuel pump relay wouldn't work, and the cluster and stuff wouldn't turn on. Uh, I was missing a whole bunch of grounds. I pulled, apparently the grounds for the ECU and all of that functionality ground onto the block. There's not many grounds, there's not really like a grounding bus on this car. It's grounding to the block and then they have this skinny little wire uh, going to the chassis and one of them going to the block and then that's how the ECU is most of the ECU is grounded in the engine bay harness which I cut which is fine but that was just a funny realization so I did that for now kind of ugly but it works uh, it was just enough for me to make sure my OBD2 and my ECU was turning on and a lot of other things the other thing is this car this truck is emissions exempt because of uh, I think a weight class and a truck limit and I believe mileage and some other things so there's a lot of options for that in this area I don't know if that is available in your area so like I said about the you want to be able to plug in your OBD2 port you want to be able to inspect the car everything else so that's why this integration is desirable I had a lot of questions people were like why would you want to integrate it at all why don't you just use a stock computer well you can usually tell that someone who hasn't tuned a lot with the stock ECU obviously doing standalone and something like this is very desirable, much nicer. The boost control, the boost cut, the closed loop fuel, all the other functions uh, just makes it incredibly easy. There's so many safeties, ease of use. If you're gonna change stuff a lot, which I will, uh, all of that, and uh, just easy to tune. I, I mean, I said ease of use, but also extremely easy to tune for people. So all of that <laughs> is very nice, but then losing things sucks. So uh, I thinned all that out. I'm gonna close it up and try to put the ECU back there. It was. Here, I think I said that already, I may or may not have. I cut the mount out of the body, give myself a little bit more room. The fans came out farther than I thought. They're not exact fits, because this is like a Duramax thing, so I had to do this. I may see if he has Duramax electric fans. That might be a pretty late model, but uh, I just had to nip these up, so there's little air gaps I was gonna put like HVAC tape on. Uh, these fans are so powerful, that probably doesn't matter. The other thing is uh, getting to this 
throttle body and stuff, but that's all long-term stuff. We got to get the turbo on and it running and started and that'll be the big leap. And then usually we start it on a partial downpipe, get everything working and then we complete the exhaust. And then I will work on to making sure everything works as far as AC and fans and all of that happy stuff. There's a Terminator down there. I have a different pedal plugged in. These trucks have a different pedal. They don't have the same plug. I'm gonna get like an 07 and an 08 truck pedal, which I believe has the same plug as that. And then a trick I learned from someone is the truck pedal doesn't work. You have to swap two of the wires. I'm gonna confirm that. Maybe some of you guys know already. If you could link me, that'd be awesome. I believe you just swap like a brown and a yellow or so don't quote me, but a bunch of people have said, yeah, it's a, it's a two wire swap truck pedal is different voltages. I've been trying to get a wiring diagram of both, but that's proved to be f pretty unreliable. A lot of them say different things. Uh, so the Terminator and a lot of the Holly stuff is designed after a CTSV pedal or a GM performance parts pedal, which is what this is. So I need to get an exact wiring diagram of this, or I can just actually figure them out because I believe this is power, this is ground, and these are the two signal wires. So it might just be something as simple as swapping these signal wires uh, for the truck pedal. So it might be that easy. We'll find out, right guys? So everything else is in here. We opted to put it in the center console. Uh, Got to straighten everything out then, but we're not very far from uh, getting the turbo and stuff mounted. Uh, I've been doing a lot of waiting and thinking about what to do with certain things. And then uh, it was over Christmas break. A lot of businesses were closed. Uh, in fact, uh, my Holly guy said, they would do a sponsorship on this, but he's been so backed up, or his work has been, he submitted it, but it's sitting in an approval bin. So I took the initiative and I, I had an entire Terminator X80E 58 tooth drive-by-wire transmission, everything all-encompassing kit for the Mustang outside that's gonna get done. I put it on here and I'm just hoping they backfill me. <laughs> if not, I'll just buy a system for the Mustang, but this thing's apart and I already cut the wiring out of it. So this one got it first and since I was messing with the key so much I have it on a two amp I've been charging it up because I've been beating up the battery a lot by just constantly sitting with the key on and other things so Right now the keys on nice uh, The neat thing about cutting so much out of the engine bay is it left a million fused power wires underneath So we have the key on coming out of there because it stays keyed on it works great and then, yeah. yep, fuel pump, we got pressure. Terminator comes on right there. If we check out the monitor, multi-gauge sensors. Uh, I got the four bar map scaled right now with the laptop, 100 kPa. Uh, manifold temp, 56. Coolant temp, 53. Idle air position and everything else is all good. I don't have the transmission plugged in yet. <laughs> Uh, we were going to pick it up and I, I was kind of waiting till I get the crank position <coughs> extension harness. So when I crawl under there, I can plug in the trans and zip tie the wires and everything else. The only other thing that I need to add back into this truck is it has a range selector switch. So this is a park neutral safety for the starter. And it also, uh, this truck has the range selection. <coughs> Excuse me again. This has the range selector where it says park reverse neutral drive there. So it'll be neat to have that. It was there. Why not re-enable it, right? And then the only other thing is this truck actually has a trans temp gauge. So that won't work because you can't split it. But I could install another temp sensor into the pan and wire that the same uh, tranny temp into the ECU. And then I would get it. So there's ways to do all of that. And that's what I'm trying to figure out if I want to do. Uh, the oil pressure, you can split because it's a five volt, so the factory oil pressure thing will work. Most people don't care really about, most of the time they don't work that great. He already has a zero to 100 there, so it's not a stock one. I'll be, I'll be able to see oil pressure on here. Uh, it's one of those things, the fuel gauge is the most important to me, and then I'll probably cover up, the, I'll probably might even stick the guy down in here if we can get it around everything, like just put the Terminator over here because all the vitals will be on the Terminator. It's just nice to see tack and speedometer in a car that it's supposed to work in, obviously. Other than that, you can use a speedometer output. So these are, again, splitting sensors. Vehicle speed, tur uh, turbine speed, which is converter speed or crank speed, and then vehicle speed. 
it's a VR Hall effect sensor. If you split that, it screws it up also. So you can't split the VSS into the computer to get the everything working. But what you can do is when you have ADE and everything hooked up, you can do vehicle speed output. So I'm going to take the vehicle speed output wire and put it into the ECU as vehicle speed sensor or some other things and get that functional. So all of that should be happy then also. And then, yeah, see my fuel pressure. Yeah, no leaks. It runs about, I have it set at 50 pounds. I can turn it down to like 40 five or 43 a lot of people complain about the spring pressure and overloading the pumps and whole, people just love to complain don't they so this has a single 450 i'm going to add another 450 the holly is going to turn that on at a trigger point i might be able to run both 450s hot all the time with this much line and regulator without overrunning but these in-tank pumps don't like to go very high on pressure so if your base is 75 and you add a bunch of boost with a boost reference regulator uh, I feel like over 80 these pumps start to fall off on flow pretty extreme so you want to stay away from that so I might turn this all the way down back to like 45 or 43 and then I'm going to probably stagger the pumps because it stops it from recirculating a ton of needless fuel so yes that's whoosh, giant overview of where we are not very far uh, from the finish at least very close to starting it I could start it it would start and run now the intake's not totally tight but it would start an idle but it's open manifold and over here there's only like two bolts in and then I'd have to tighten the oil fittings down just to take them right back off the turbo and yeah you know I don't think I want to do that yet it would just be loud as hell uh, I don't see the point uh, I'm not that anxious it ran a couple days ago and we tore everything apart I'm not really that scared it's not like it's a swap so just waiting to tidy up a little bit more. I'm sure I'll just have the downpipe dumped and we'll fire it and, you know, that'll be nice. So, once we're there, we can work on more of the integration. Yada, yada, yada. I also put a stereo in the car. My wife always buys me for my turbo and my now <laughs> blower car. She buys me this Kenwood head unit that has a MP3 and takes USB. See, same one. So she gets me that for all my cars. So I took the downtime opportunity and installed that also. So I think that's it for now. Uh, we're moving right along. I will summarize all of this info, especially about the pedal. People say a truck pedal doesn't work, but it has the same connector, so it must be a wiring difference. Uh, the Snake Eater throttle is working great with the Holly. Snake Eater throttle works great on this. This is a 92 Snake Eater drive-by-wire, 92 mil. And then this guy's a 102. So it'd be neat to push this thing. I think he already has a customer that's running like 22 pounds and the throttle doesn't shut. So that's everyone's biggest concern is on big boost. Is the China actuator strong enough to keep the throttle open? So that's something we will see. It will be fired on. It has like a half a tank. So I'll probably pick up the rest of the tank worth of fuel once I swap the second pump in. I'll probably dump ethanol in. So it'll have approximately 50%. And then these are Snake Eater 1000s. I would love to push these to their limit on 50 and 70 some ish percent and i would love to be able to top these out and give you guys a definite answer on what you can expect out of those we've already made 700 tire and have room to grow on a bunch of cars in the 50 60 70 percent area so just get some solidified data and then i believe this turbo will probably run it'll be neat if if they're okay but i assume that these are going to run out about 900 wheel maybe 950 maybe 850 that's what we're going to see. And then I have 1500, so I'm going to drop in when and if these run out. So there's all of that. <laughs> I hope I got mostly everything for you guys. If you have any other questions after this much information, let me know. I can't answer the integration things other than my theories and what people have said to me until I do it and let you know. So that's where we are. Uh, there really isn't too much great detail on this stuff and each one of these applications are different. If you have a Corvette, if it's serial data, if it's CAN bus, they're all different. All I did was, I mean, I just have ECU pinouts and everything here from like a LT1 swap and I was just going through and removing stuff. I have to do the AC signal wire, obviously. Uh, this is a two wheel drive, so all this four wheel drive stuff doesn't exist. Uh, the only thing that I was quick to cut and didn't realize I cut my range selector out it's probably pretty hard to it might not have been that hard to thin it out and peel it apart but it was just more fun to cut it i don't really mind about uh, obviously this guy got cut up here in the engine bay and that's what plugs down into the range select 
it's only like eight wires it's definitely not gonna, gonna be that hard to pin back in and then what's cool is it has neutral safety that everything in the dash works like i said uh, all that stuff is there why not just use it make it easy for yourself one of these things if, if you are very intimidated by this you could just unplug what the holly isn't doing and plug the holly in you can start the car on the holly especially if you have a th400 or anything like that uh, your shifter cable and everything's normal if you have an ade and if you ade with the holly all that stuff is normal too i had some people ask could you just do a terminator that doesn't do drive-by-wire and doesn't do ade and swap this truck to a cable yes the harness comes with uh, all the stuff, the provisioning, I shoved it down here. Idle air and TPS. You could easily just do a China throttle, convert the thing to cable, turn off the codes. See, you kind of need both then at this point, but that's where the higher functionality comes with, or you just need someone you know to turn this stuff off. Anyway, you a little bit of playing with both, but that's where we are with this part of the game. <laughs> you guys have seen stock computer stuff from me, and you've seen Holly stuff, so now we're going to do a little bit of both to uh, get you know, the dream machine working here. So like I was saying, sorry, I squirreled out a minute there. If you're intimidated by this, you can just take over, just, just plug in the holly, just plug in the engine stuff and get it going. Uh, if you're losing some functionality in the car, just try to add it in as you go. Uh, like I always say to people, if you wanna do an LS swap, and people are like, might as well go turbo and everything. And uh, that's how stuff gets backburnered. Sometimes the cost comes up out of nowhere. Uh, things happen. Uh, you need to learn about it first. There's no problem in admitting those issues. Uh, I always tell people, I'm like, get the most complete engine for your money, put it in and make it run. And then a cam is like a weekend thing. A turbo kit isn't that hard when everything's already running. Like, that's the nice thing. So that's what I, my advice is. If you want to do a side by side just get it in and get it working and try to integrate stuff as you go uh, it doesn't have to be that hard you don't have to i went a little extreme and i cut stuff uh, i just thought it'd be funny to cut it and i'm confident that i'll make it all work anyway or i'll repin everything and it's not a huge deal because this is a completely modular harness uh, if you flip this up it unscrews the whole socket unplugs so I could literally, I think in my attic, I have three complete truck harnesses. They might not be this specific because I think they were drive by cable, but you get the idea. You can just, I can go back. It's, this is a stock application. I don't really lose anything by, if I completely quit and plug a stock harness back in, it just lays in here. It's, it's not that bad. So that's why I'm also not scared. Uh, also, I have confidence in myself. <laughs> so there is all of that. Uh, so, like I said, the more we iron this stuff out and get it going, the farther we get along, the next update will happen. So, that's all that. Like I said, I believe two minutes earlier before I rambled. If you have any questions after all this information, go ahead and ask. Uh, parts and stuff like that, if you ask, I will post links in the video. Other than that, I feel like you guys know how to use eBay and the Holly website and Jags and VS Racing. So, that's where we are. Whew.